in the bed, going out, closing services, challenging situations, people in tears, time and time again. I think it, this is very, very really simple. We're going to take this campaign from this chamber. We're going to wait for an answer from the government. I'm not going to hold my breath, but we'll take the campaign to Westminster, to Downing Street, and we're going to say very, very clearly, give the people of Liverpool its money back.
uh, abject uh, insult to publishing um, is there any attempt at an explanation or a comment? <laughs> of course, Councillor Radford is right. There are really difficult questions in campaign. If we knew how to campaign comprehensively against austerity, we wouldn't be where we are today, would we? But it's why it's absolutely right for this motion to put back on the table and say, we aren't going to, to a vote in the council chamber, through a true speeches, turn the tide. What we have to do is to have an ongoing conversation with the people of this city and other cities. And that's going to be difficult, and the different aspects to that. I think Councillor Kushner and Councillor Mitchell are actually right. A fundamental challenge to the economics of austerity. But I like that also an argument about fairness. And there are going to be some difficult arguments, Councillor Radford, about distribution within this country. There's going to be some difficult arguments with Labour councils in London about the resources that London gets and that we get. Of course, some Labour councils in London are treated unfairly as well, but there's no doubt that more resources go to London than should and to parts of the South East. And we need to engage with that, which is what the Mayor's motion did that. So I think this motion is part of a continuing conversation. It's not, it can't be the final, but it should be. And that's what we need to have. It's the conversation which really needs to take place outside this council chamber, primarily, not inside it. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cushman. It's very boring on this committee. Thank, thank you, my lord. There's a clear theme to tonight's meeting. We've been talking about different aspects of campaign against austerity, and we've heard some of the impacts of austerity. And the fact that we actually had to debate the fact that children are going hungry in our city is the reason why at the last council meeting we all agreed a motion for the government to introduce into the Children's Social Work Bill that every decision that it makes in government must be tested against what impact it has on children and families because the cuts to benefit cuts, the cuts to local authorities and the other cuts that this government has made has clearly had that impact and it shouldn't be allowed to get away with it. But of course, it did take in Duncan Smith with his self-fulfilling resignation to alert us in the newspapers that austerity is a political choice, because we knew that already, didn't we? We've been arguing, some of us have been arguing that since 2010. And Paul Crumpton actually said that exactly at that time, it's jobs now, deficit later, because he knew perfectly well that at a relatively low level of national debt, we were able to sustain what we were doing if we invested correctly to get our country back on its feet, because it had nothing to do with overspending. It had everything to do with the fact that there was a lower tax debt because people had become unemployed and were claiming benefits. I'll just give one tiny example, corporation tax. Corporation tax, for the biggest companies in this country, has been reduced by 28%. By 28%, from 28% to 20%. And that means that the likes of our banks in this country, even, even when you include the, the amount of money they have to pay through their bank levy, are paying less now in tax than they did before the last government came in. That's what you do when you make political choices about resources and spending and decisions that you need to make that should be in the interests of all people in our country. I was in the chamber in 2012 and not been elected. Uh, as a council. I'm sorry that Council Kent is getting so much attention tonight, but I remember when he was arguing about the fact that austerity was necessary because of the condition and the state of the British economy, and then at the same time he was saying that Kent, together with, was meeting with Cable and Clare, like some grotesque remake of Last of the Summer Wine, were going to meet each other to ask for more money for this city. Well, that fell on deaf ears, as we've seen in the abject publication that Councillor Mundy just referred to. So, local government is no state bureaucracy. It's the nearest thing, apart from probably the National Health Service, where people have a relationship with the state and the public sector. What we do and the things that we talk about regularly in adult social care, in my brief, in children's social care, in youth clubs, and in the street lights and the roads that we have in this city. This is the relationship that it has at a local level because they are some of the most important things that people in our lives have to deal with on a daily basis. So cutting local government absolutely goes to the fundamental interest, against the fundamental interests 
of most people living in local authority areas, not least this city. So yes, we do need to do a campaign and take it to the Prime Minister to explain that we want a fair settlement for our city. And Theresa May say that there should be a fairer settlement in this city, but she must listen to what we are saying, because we are saying, and I move, it's Liverpool, give us our money back. Standing up next to me, husband's after that. Um, <laughs> no, 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 actually, I don't. It's not that often that we agree, especially. <laughs> Absolutely right. We do need to come together. There does need to be a campaign. It does need to go to the LGA, but it also needs to hit right on number ten's door. We need to be banging it down, and we need to say exactly what Barry's just said: give us our money back. Okay, I'm going to take the vote now. Those in favour? <laughs> Unanimous, of course. Wonderful. Right. Right, so we've got this one now. Item 14, student run laws and the city's tax base by council. Laura Robertson finds the next one. Now, just just a minute. Just a minute. This is going to get dead messy because there's three amendments here. So I'm going to ask you to be really, really um, patient with me. So the first amendment is from Councillor Tom Crone. Now, Okay, and then the second amendment is from Councillor Richard Kent. Yeah. And then the third amendment is from Councillor Frank Holmes. It's an addendum. Okay, that's good. So we can just treat that. We had to fight the landlord lobby for 
that skin. And it's a shiny example to have the local authorities. And I was stunned when I saw what looked like criticism of that skin in one of the amendments. I've also stood here and I've made requests for further controls on houses of multiple occupation. Again, I know that is supported by colleagues across, across the chamber. Look, then we have to try and find a way to help ensure that those who are making profits in this city and are not currently paying their way do start to pay their way. But that's not just things that we can control within our, our own administration and within our, our leadership here. So what is this motion asking for? As I say, we cannot impose a business tax. We don't have that legal situation. What we're asking for is for letters to be written, for organisations and national contacts to be made, to start a debate. Because, well, Mayor, if we do move to a situation where the, where the city has to go to 100% devolution of income and to complete localisation of business tax, then we can't support over 10% of the population who currently don't pay council tax also not being covered by any other form of income. We need to look at new ways of doing things, and we need to look at who makes profits that can contribute to that. So the businesses who are making the profits, who currently are exempt from local taxes, must be asked to pay their share. Thank you, thank you Laura. Um, now, I'm going to take um, Councillor Crone's amendment now. If you, are you happy? Are you going to move your amendment, or are you going to scrap it? What? I, I will, I'm going to, I intend to withdraw my amendment, but I speak to the motion. Shall I do that now? Thank you, all okay. Thank you. Oh, it was just being seconded over there. Okay, so, well, again, we've welcomed the uh, amendment by Councillor Hon. And the reason that we've withdrawn our amendment is because it does address our two main concerns, which were that the cost would be passed on to the students, and also that there wasn't uh, any consultation with the students or student bodies, which it looks like it's going to be addressed now. Um, we, we never actually dispute the fact that council tax, the council does need to raise income and maintain its revenue base as best it can. We don't dispute the fact that students put a demand on city council services. And finally, we've been supportive of the introduction of the landlord licensing scheme, which aims to improve the condition for tenants in the long term. But the problems we have with the motion include the fact that, as it stood, we felt that landlords would pass on any cost to their tenants. This would have a detrimental effect on students, particularly those with poorer backgrounds who are already struggling with, with costs. Furthermore, students have already been hit by several, several increased costs in recent years. Ten years ago, tuition fees were just £3,000 per annum, and now they're £9,000. Student maintenance grants have been reduced in real terms in recent years and have now been abolished for new students. And bursaries for nursing, nursing have also been removed. This council has a proud record of protecting student, uh, not student, but residents who can least afford increased costs. The council tax support scheme is still in existence long after it was abolished in other local authorities. Student landlords are already beginning to move, sell up and move on due to tax changes announced a year ago. Additional costs arising from the imposition of business rates would undoubtedly mean that many more do the same. Another concern was that we felt that passing this motion would send a signal that the city was anti-student. The world of higher education is fiercely competitive with universities doing their level best to attract students. In support of this, the council has done a great deal to improve facilities and infrastructure in the knowledge quarter but this good work could be undone by negative publicity created by the council passing the motion as it previously stood. So, that notwithstanding, thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. This motion is about exploring options, localist options, to address a particular problem in Liverpool. And in this city, one in 25 homes are student homes. The value of the council tax exemption for those student homes comes to 10. 
million pounds a year. And by 2020, that's a cost that we will meet um, ourselves. It's right that we're working with universities, with student representatives, and with landlords to try to bridge that gap in a fair and progressive way, and in a way that reinforces our wider housing strategy. And it's right, Lord Mayor, that we're asking the government for new powers to address some of these issues. Lord Mayor, the communities that I represent will bear the brunt of doing nothing about this. There are huge problems in places like Kensington Fields and the city centre, with large student populations that the city council mitigates through our frontline public services like street cleansing, refuge collection, community cohesion, noise pollution, street lighting. And we do that while private landlords, many of whom are absentee landlords, take what is often obscene amounts out of our city. In Kensington Fields, they converted three bedroom terraced houses into six bedroom student HMOs. They're charging £95 a week per bedroom for 48 weeks of the year. That comes to over £26,000 and it often undermines those communities. The final issue I want to raise with this Lord Mayor is around the issue of rent controls and how this will impact on students. It's high time that the universities stop the universities stop abdicating their responsibility around this issue. The University of Liverpool is the single, single largest student landlord in the city. John Moore's university has a different model, but they commission student places through um, private halls of residence. They allocate the policy, they allocate places, they control who lives there. They have a significant amount of influence over the market. They can stop the rents being raised, they can stop these costs being passed on to students, they can influence the rest of the market because they are so big on this. And we want to work with the universities to do this. So the final appeal that I will make to everybody in this chamber, to the Green Party, to the universities, to student representatives from the Guild and from Liverpool Students' Union, is work with us to try to address these problems. Work with us to bring in the extra resources that we need in this city and do it in a progressive and fair way that taxes the landlords, that brings rents down and contains rents where they are at the moment and doesn't pass those costs unfairly onto those who are least able to pay that. Work with us to do that and we can solve these problems. Where 
um, can show for that. But also a lot of my friends who are just like long students are actually seeing a, a, a much noticeable difference in their standards. So I think that's extremely important. And I think what is extremely important and something that I'm proud that we have done um, as a Labour Council is about regulating the market because the market won't regulate itself because it doesn't especially in the capitalist society, and we have to recognise that. Unless we come in and regulate it, there is going to be concerns, and there is always the risk that will be passed on to the end consumer. But as my elite vegetarian partner says, um, you can have cheaper meat if you do not regulate abattoirs, but you will be lucky if you get horse meat. Thank you. Thank you. Driver for landlords to keep their rents low. 
reducing the rental value of their properties and keeping their business rates bill down. And of course, whatever landlord had to pay in business rates would ultimately be tax deductible when it came to settling their corporation and income tax bill with central government at the end of the year. Finally, colleagues, let me be clear. Should the unscrupulous or greedy among the city landlords decide to pass these costs on to students, we will not stand idly by. Colleagues, by this time next year, we will have our own house and business. If student landlords will not provide students with decent accommodation and living price, then we will. Thank you.